What's up guys and welcome to our van tour episode. Come on in and just take your shoes off. And the first thing you probably notice is we do have a mosquito net. That's just to keep all the bugs out. This is our vegetable fruit bag. You just uh, put it down here, boom, it stays. And she made that the day before yeah. we took off. <laughs> she acclimated it. By the way, we're inside a Mercedes Sprinter 144 wheelbase with the high roof. So this is not the extended version. This 144 wheelbase fits inside of a regular parking space. We also installed a swivel seat. Just gives us an extra little space to sit down at. I made her a box for when we're driving. There's a box up here if you come up here. It's just like extra storage, little shoe storage, and also the the seat is too high for her, so <laughs> made her this box so she can uh, put her feet on there and so they're not all dangling <laughs> while we're driving. And we made this as well. Jocelyn actually made this one. Uh, and we cut out a piece of wood, a piece of plywood, and we made the top one. There's a lip that's made with a 2x2. Two two, and we also uh, added an extra, extra bottom here. And this one has no lip, and but nothing has fallen off of it. Uh, at all and but it's mostly just like hoodies uh, jackets and toilet paper paper towel and another last minute addition that I added were these little holes uh, these uh these eyes right here these eye bolts I think that's what it's called but I have a carabiner on my cast iron and I can just hang that right there and on the freeway it's completely fine like that but when we come up on these bumpy roads like dirt roads and stuff then I'll take it off actually and then uh, store it somewhere else where it's not gonna be you know bouncing around and swinging around uh, but on the freeway it's up there it's completely fine and it doesn't hit my head or anything while I'm driving because this lower portion stops it from going forwards we also have a fan up front this is a max air fan and we usually use this one to suck out and we also have another one in the back uh, which will show you and that one usually uh, we're pulling in air and so we got nice circulation throughout the van and it actually stays pretty cool in here and this side right here this has all of our spices they're magnetized so they don't fall off um, this is our light switch this one goes up here so when we're cooking we have extra light and then this one controls the puck lights try to turn it off so we can turn them back on. We can also dim them down. And then our battery is right here. This tells us how much battery we still have, which we are at 100%, even though it's still morning, already fully charged with our solar panels, just from the few hours of morning light. This is our induction cooktop stove. We have a double burner. Um, it works really great. The water will boil within like one or two minutes, maybe. Um, so we really love this. It doesn't use gas or anything, just electricity. And down here, we have our fridge, which is pretty nice, well stocked. It's the Dometic CRX 110. And right here, we have a push to open drawer. We also have another little cabinet down here. It has all of our cutting boards and sheet pans. This side, we have our sink. Um, and plenty of counter space. It's really nice when we're cooking. These are all of our drawers also pushed to open. I made these dividers in each of the drawers just to keep things better organized. And right here, we decided to put a little shelf so we can keep things. And these are just stick on tiles. We thought about putting actual tiles, but decided they're gonna be way too heavy and we kind of thought it'd be harder to work with, but actually these stick-on ones were kind of a pain to be cutting. We also have a mirror that we put right there. <laughs> and up here we have our jars that hold some of our dry ingredients. And this one, reusable hand towels. And what's nice about this is like, it's the clicking you hear makes it so that it's not gonna start rolling while we're driving. And then you just wash them when you want to reuse them and they just uh, button on, button off. And this up here is just our cabinets for some more storage. We have our cups and bowls and we have some Tupperware even. These are pretty cool because they collapse. 
So it's really space saving and you just get the lid. Boom. I think these are bamboo made um, bowls and cups. I'll have to double check, but it's basically, we didn't want to do glass because we don't want things breaking while we're driving. And the rest is just a bunch of food. Um, we have a small blender actually. You can see it right here. In case we want to make any smoothies or salsas or anything. I oh, yeah, the most important, some tajin. And on this side we have our sink, which is fairly deep, which is something we really wanted since it's much easier to wash our, not just our dishes, but we have a pretty big cutting board. And we like that this comes down too. Now let me show you something really, really amazing that I thought of and I think this is awesome and it's a game changer right here. Under this butcher block here, this butcher block by the way is from Ikea, it's just the Ikea butcher block and we just cut it to size. Let me show you what's inside here. We have a big, big drawer here. When you pull it open, oh I have a latch actually on here. There's a latch so it doesn't swing open when we're driving and it's also held with a magnet. We're going to open this up and inside of here we have the nature's head composting toilet and it's on 330 pound drawer slides so it can support our weight we can just step right on there and you can open it up just like that right here and it's mounted onto the floor of this drawer so it's not going anywhere when we're driving it's not moving around and you can just step right on up the way a composting toilet works that is split it into two separate sections uh, so there's the front section, all the pee goes in there, it holds in there, and the back section holds, it's like you just basically put, it's like mulch, and then it's compost, and you turn turn this handle here, and it basically turns the mulch around, and then it turns your, your deuce into uh, compost, and that's how it works. I showed this before, uh, during the build and stuff, and uh, people were saying, oh, it's going to splash, it's going to get your countertops dirty, blah, blah, blah. It's honestly, no, it doesn't. It, you, can, you can keep it clean. If you're, if you're splashing on the countertops, you're doing it wrong. After you pee, we also use this. It's half vinegar, half water uh, with uh, some citrus peels uh, that jo Jocelyn just made. And then that just makes it, you know, smell, smell nice. That's part one of this little conversion. The second thing here, let me show you the second thing, which is even cooler than this. This countertop actually lifts up and I can pull this entire thing off. And I'm gonna put this on the, to the side and I usually put it on the driver's seat. And this exposes our shower. Yeah, that's right. We have a shower inside our 144 wheelbase Sprinter. And what you see there is the shower curtain and the shower head. Now let me just show you how that works. We have the shower head. Pull this guy down. You can untwist the head off of this. And we just attach the shower. And we have hot water in here, by the way. And we have a 7 liter water heater right here. And it is powered. It's DC power. So it's very efficient and it, we just leave it on the entire time. I've left this on for the past three weeks, like since even when I was just doing the build, I just left it on just to see how it, how it would work, you know? And it's perfect. It just doesn't take much power at all um, because there's constantly hot water in there. With the water that comes out, immediately it's hot, it's hot. Oh yeah, if you didn't see, we have a little trash bag in there too. You can see, we just hung a trash bag on the door so we just have our trash there. We have some cleaning supplies in the back of that. Oh, let me show you this while we're at it. A big water filter in the back there. Back to the shower. The shower curtain here, custom made by my mom. She's uh, amazing at, at this stuff. She can sew so well. And we just put this on a little hook up there. Little hook here. And we have two more, but these aren't hooks. These are magnets. And you don't see anything up here. But if you place it in the right spot, it magnetizes as well as on this side. Bam, magnetizes there. And now we have the shower curtain leading into the shower pan that is in here. We have the perfect amount of space for us to shower in here. So we just go right over this. There's a magnet 
all the water just gets funneled into this uh, shower pan that I installed here. This is a 24 by 24 inch shower pan and it drains down and down into the gray water tank that's mounted under the van. The shower curtain is actually held by the magnet right there too. So utilizing a bunch of magnets uh, works really well. There's a little lever that I attached here and you just turn that lever. You set the heat before and you just turn that lever and it all comes out. This. And on the side of the sink we have this uh, water gauge. It tells us how much water we have left in our fresh water tank. And this is a switch for our water heater. And this just goes right back in. And you'll never know there's a toilet or there's a full bathroom actually in here. And by the way, all of the furniture here, it's all made with 80-20. Um, I cut every piece of 80-20 that's in here. Um, I cut it all to size. It's 80-20 aluminum extrusion is what it's called. And it's very strong. Uh, yeah, it doesn't warp, barely doesn't bend. And it's also lightweight. The only thing is it's a little expensive, you know. That's the only thing you got to, you know, invest a little into it. But these days, man, wood is also expensive. So honestly, like, I was like, I'm just gonna go with the 80-20. And I did the whole build 80-20, except for this, because I made this cabinet first. And I, this is all wood, and also this is wood. Everything else in here, uh, it's framed with 80-20, and we just put uh, wood panels on everything. I'm really happy I made that decision, because I'm confident that it's not gonna, it's not gonna break, you know, it's sturdy. Let me show you our hangout area and our work area. So this is our little L couch and this gorgeous table right here is on a Laguna mount, which just means it can- oh, Lagoon mount. Oh, Lagoon mount, sorry. You can bring it here. You can turn it if you need to slide out. It's really nice. It also, you can tighten it that way when you're driving, it's not like swinging all over the place. And this was made by Miles from Lion's Heart Woodworks. Underneath the couch, we have additional storage see it right here boom you have it packed full and then over here we have our cabinet for storage this just has more of my clothes this one has some of our electronics this is our charging station so you can see we have all our cords they plug into here and this is our big storage one so this one can hold all of our backpacks and tripods and you can kind of see the fishing rods and over here we have a little reading nook um, we actually made this because even though i'm short enough to easily fit across taku needed a little extra space so that's what this is for so that's why i put the books here i don't really need the extra space uh, we have a fire alarm and carbon monoxide detector right here just in case and up here is more storage for our, our clothes mainly and we keep everything organized in packing cubes just so it's not getting all messy and every time we open it it doesn't fall out so these are really nice. We have more on this side. This is his side, my side. And this over here is my weight blanket. It's about 15 pounds. I wasn't going to bring it, but we did sleep in here um, the day before this we left. And I felt right like here. I really needed the weight blanket. Now let me show you our bed system. This is very cool too. And this was sort of the design is inspired by this guy I found on Instagram, he's from Germany, his name is Mo, uh, Mo. And it's sort of similar to his style. I saw his conversion and I thought it was genius. So I was like, I'm going to go with something like that. And, uh, but I made it completely my style. So you can see it's kind of propped up right now. This is, it's basically like a futon. And it's kind of like, you can sit on it like that. I can sit up there. There's little tabs on each side of the bed. Just press those guys. And this thing just pulls out and I just lower down. <laughs> and that's it. That's, that's our bed conversion and it converts into nearly a full size bed. The width is uh, 53, 54 inches. So I think that's about a full size bed. But the length is a little shorter. Um, and I just made it barely long enough for me to fit in. I'm only 5'6 and Jocelyn's like 5 feet. So she's perfectly fine. Uh, but it's a little tight for me, but uh, still works perfectly. These, I put it on 600 pound drawer slides, real heavy duty drawer slides. And you can see that when I want to go on there, I can hang out on the edge, perfectly fine. This doesn't have any give. 
super strong, heavy duty drawer slides. We wanted it to feel like we, there was more space. You know, we wanted it to feel pretty big inside uh, because we're going to be spending time inside of here. We're going to be editing in here. We're going to be, you know, so we're going to be spending time inside. So we didn't want to, um, yeah, be all cramped and no nowhere to sit. So this bed actually locks when it when you pull it out and it also locks when we push it in. And how we control that is the tabs. So when we want to close back, we press the tab again. And I just pull the back side of the bed like that and just push it back. And it locks in. Super simple. And now it's away. Now we got our living room again. So much space in here when it's converted. Look at that. The bathroom, I had to stick it out a little further and I had to make the decision either to match the bathroom and just go all the way down or push it back and then keep it a little more narrow. And you know what? I'm really glad that I made it a little more narrow because that gives us a little extra space right in between these two. And a few inches of width makes a huge difference in a van. And we actually slept here last night in this location and check out this view. It is not a bad view to wake up to. So here's the back of the van. As you can see, <laughs> it is stuffed. I brought as much stuff as possible. <laughs> we got a huge cooler in here. We got my fishing gear. We got a, also a propane uh, stovetop and a ton of storage. And if, if I, yeah, I can just actually move this around just to show you how much it fits in here. So. We have these two big tubs, kind of has like our outdoor gear and then we don't have like extra, just extra stuff like, I don't know, paper towels and first aid kit. And I have my PFD because we have a kayak up there. I will show you that in a second. And we got boots because we're going to be in the water a lot. We're going to be going on boats. We're going to be going, you know, going fishing and all that stuff. And uh, yeah, you can, you can check out all those kind of adventures on our main channel, Outdoor Chef Life. So here I made a shelf and then this is a lip with the 80-20 and uh, this is my outdoor table So when I'm cooking outside, I want to be outside. I can bust that out And we have all the plumbing on this side and we have all the electrical on this side So let me start with the plumbing. We have a 24 gallon fresh water tank right here that actually is custom made to fit over the wheel well to save space and I'm so glad I went with this. It's a little bit more expensive, but not too much, uh, but it, it does save a lot of space. So I'm glad I went with that. And we use a lot of PEX, PEX tubes, PEX piping uh, for the plumbing system. And uh, all we, right here, this is how we fill the, the fresh water tank. And we just take, take a hose, uh, which we have right here. We have a hose on the door. And wherever there's, uh, wherever there's uh, water, potable water, and we attach this to the end of the hose. This is a filter. It's just called an RV water filter. So that goes on the end of the hose and this goes in here and we fill the water tank. We have another hose, but this hose is actually uh, an outdoor shower. And this just goes, pops right in. And it's, we got water. Water pressure is pretty strong. Look at that. So that's another feature of the van. I, I really put in here everything I could think of. I went all out on this build. By the way, this is my first van build ever. This is our first one. And I figured that this layout will give us the most space inside as well as the most storage space uh, back here. Because we have, as you can see, we have a lot of stuff. We do, <laughs> we're gonna be doing a lot of fishing and, and all of that. Oh, speaking of fishing, I have another little feature here. This here is my rod holder. This is a nine and a half foot rod, a two piece rod. And I fit, I can fit six rods in here. I could probably fit a couple more. Really trying to make use of uh, any available space as much as possible. And I think we did that. And you can see here on the right side, we have all... <laughs> Jocelyn is uh, getting attacked by bugs. <laughs> We have here on the right side all of our electrical system and the entire electrical system is here. If we need to work on any of the electrical, these panels are removable, this rod holder is removable. So I have 400 amp hours of lithium battleborne batteries and that is connected to a Lynx distributor 
uh, the Victron Lynx distributor, and that goes to four separate components. And one is the 12 volt DC, and that powers all the lights, and it powers the, the water heater, the water pump, uh, all kinds of stuff, most of the stuff that's inside the van. And uh, the another component it goes to is the solar charge controller, and that basically allows uh, us to have solar panels. So we have 350 watts of solar panels on the roof, and that comes down to the solar charge controller, charges up the batteries pr pretty quickly too. Another component it goes to is a Sterling DC to DC charger. It's connected basically to the car battery, which allows the alternator to charge up the batteries back here. So when we're driving, when the car is on, uh, it charges the batteries too. So that's our second way of charging up the batteries. And we have a third way too. We also have the 3000 watt inverter. Uh, inverter allows us to connect to shore power. So that's a third way of charging up the batteries. Oh, this is also some bear mace because we're gonna be going to Alaska. So we need some bear mace for sure. And we have one up here, we have one up front too. And we also install this ladder. So that goes up to the roof, and then take you up. The first thing you see is this big old thing. This is a foldable kayak from Oru Kayak. So that's our solar panels, 350 watts of solar. And I put in this deck, rooftop deck. And I do not regret this one bit. This is amazing. We were just sitting out here last night and just chilling up here, having a beer. And uh, if we move, if we move that out of the way, we have plenty more space too. And the roof rack and the ladder is from Van Tech. Uh, we got it from them, and then we just installed it, installed it ourselves as well. Way before I even started saving for a van, I even thought about buying one. Um, I used to watch these van tour videos on YouTube, and they always be like, "Oh, this is our first van build ever," and and they would build these amazing, beautiful vans and I always thought how is that possible with no experience they can do that and uh, now that I've done it myself and I've done pretty much 100% of, of the van build uh, ourselves it's all it's all us that we, we did all the work the electrical the plumbing uh, the inside the cabinets everything right and uh, the solar and I with no prior experience either I had no other prior experience building anything like this I built a couple tables before out of wood and uh, that's the extent of my experience. So after doing all that, I say you, you too can build a van with no experience. It does take time, it does take a lot of planning and it also takes a lot of money too, quite frankly. Um, but I've been fortunate enough to be in this position now that I do YouTube full time and I can basically write everything off uh, and uh, I've just been so lucky to be able to do this and it's been our dream. Jocelyn and I have been wanting to do this for several years now, uh, even before we even had a YouTube channel. So now that we run the YouTube channel and we were, we're uh, really lucky to be able to do this. So it's a satisfying feeling to be able to accomplish uh, such a big project. So I encourage any of you guys that are thinking about it, you can do it. I have one more thing to show you guys. Another cool function of this bed is the stargazing mode. Go ahead, push it out. And this is another cool feature of the bed. A little stargazing feature and you can just hang out outside on it. Super sweet. It's really cool, right? Look at that. Just hang out right there. Enjoy the view.